Welcome to GSC 203 Philosophy and Logic. Today, we are going to study Module 4, Unit 1. Unit 1, Fallacies. Fallacies, Part 1. This study unit introduces you to the definition and classification of fallacies. Our emphasis here will be particularly on fallacies involving irrelevant premises. Definition and classification of fallacies. Some arguments sometimes look so good and convincing. However, when we critically examine them, we realize that they are weak, deceptive, strong, or full of errors. What logician therefore always do is to explain the causes of errors in arguments and to avoid them in reasoning. The best way to do this is to first recognize these errors of reasoning and avoid them completely. This is because deceptive arguments are capable of misleading. You need to know that these kinds of reasoning sometimes look convincing and logically correct. Without adequate carefulness, one can accept them as true, valid, and correct reasoning. These forms of reasoning are regarded as being fallacious. One fact that you must note here is that fallacious argument or reasoning is not necessarily an invalid argument. Rather, it is an argument that appears sufficiently acceptable, but which contains errors. Kinds of fallacies. We have formal fallacies. Example of formal fallacies are fallacy of affirming the consequence, fallacy of denying the antecedent, fallacy of four term existential fallacy, fallacy of exclusive premises, informal fallacies. Examples of informal fallacies are fallacies of ambiguity, fallacies of weak induction, fallacies of relevance and fallacies of presumption, fallacies of ambiguity. Kindly note that there are four major fallacies of ambiguity and these are Fallacy of equivocation, fallacy of amphiboly, fallacy of composition, fallacy of division. A fallacy of attacking the person or argumentum ad hominem. The main business of this fallacy is to attack the person who advances an argument rather than providing a rational critique of the argument itself. The attacker's main objective is to make it assertion acceptable. This fallacy is informed of character assassination. There's appeal to force. This is mostly used whenever a conclusion is defended by a threat to the well-being of those who do not accept it. The threat can be physical, moral, or psychological. Appeal to popular feeling or mob appeal. This occurs when you try to persuade someone or a group by appealing to their emotion, feeling, sentiments. Appeal to pity. Misery cordium is a Latin word that stands for pity or mercy. So argumentum ad misericordiam is a fallacy that attempts to support a conclusion simply by evoking pity in one's audience, even though the statements that evoke the pity are logically unrelated to the conclusion. For example, I want to build more schools, more hospitals, and create more employment opportunity. If you don't vote for me this second term, I cannot achieve this. Therefore, vote for me the second term. The appeal to pity is mostly used by politicians during campaign for election and by lawyers. Fallacy of irrelevant conclusions. This fallacy is also called fallacy of ignoring the issue. This is because the conclusion that is drawn in the argument is irrelevant to the premises. The members of the, for example, the members of the National Assembly have been accused of official misconduct. Therefore, the assembly complex should be closed down. There is also red herring fallacy, fallacy of accident. In conclusion, fallacies, ambiguity, and relevance are things worthy of note in our daily activities. Thank you.